How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another review here at Big Gold Belt Media, biggoldbelt.com, for all of your needs via entertainment, sports, and the like. You got Damon G here with Jamal, who normally I'm with on the Big Gold Belt Wrestling Podcast, but yep. we both got done watching Creation of the Gods Part 1, and uh, I didn't know what to expect, obviously, because I'm not a purveyor of uh, Asian cinema, but you have a very interesting viewpoint on the film because we both watched the film you saw it in theaters and i saw it um on digital download so first impressions of the film well uh, first of all uh before we even get into the film itself uh number one shout out to wellgo usa uh mm -hmm. for a bring you the movie to north america uh yeah wellgo usa.com and you can click on creation of the gods and the and click on uh uh buy tickets and it will bring you a list of all the theaters that they will be premiering uh, the uh, the movie. Um, I saw it on Wednesday because that was the day that it was an IMAX. Uh, there are some theaters in your local area that may have it in a premium format. Uh, here in Washington, D.C., uh, we have it in Cinema Cinemark XD up in Arundel Mills. And the rest are in a couple of theaters around the area. Uh, it's a movie that deserves to be seen on the biggest, brightest best clearest screen you got with the most kick-ass sound system you got um if you are fortunate enough to see it at home wear it with the best you listen to with the best headphones you got if you don't have a okay. kick-ass sound system because this is one of those movies that is an epic the story is an epic you know uh, in one of the great chinese uh you know ancient fables uh you know the investiture of the gods that was written uh, what we're talking, you know, 1600, something like that, you know, 16, yeah. 1700s. So, um, either way, the point is, is that this is as a story, and it's part one of the story. Um, if you don't know that Creation of the Gods won Kingdom of the Storms, Kingdom of Storms, which is a hell of a title for anything, um, is uh, part one of a, of a trilogy, then you may go into the movie thinking, huh. And as this is seems to be the year of the trilogy, as you know, Fast and the Furious Part Ten, Part mm -hmm. One, uh, and then you had Spider Verse Part Two, Part Two, Part One. Uh, you know, and there's a more been a, more than a few um, entries, first or second entries into the trilogy that you didn't know you had or needed, and this is another one. Uh, so this came out originally in China back in July, and That's fortunately, really? Wellgo uh, USA brought it to the U.S. This weekend it premieres uh, tonight, actually Friday, uh, in for September twenty second, uh, all around North America. So check wellgousa.com for your local theater. Hopefully, it's playing in the theater near you. Uh, this is definitely one you're going to want to see in the theater. And to that effect, there's a lot to see in this movie just from a visual representation. It is a gorgeous film. Yes. Like that was one of the first things. Within the first 20 minutes, it's slow build, but the cinematics, even when you know they're looking at a green screen, it is gorgeous. The and opening think, sequence is bananas. Yes. Bananas. <laughs> yeah. Being in the snow fields. And if you've seen the movie Hero, everybody, you know, there's there's archers and just a very, very interesting way to start this film that talks about war and conquering and usurping a family i guess you can say and just manifest destiny of taking one's children and making them your own if you are the head of a dynasty which we're right. given in this first 20 minutes like i wrote down 22 minutes into the move we finally get the title screen the first 15 minutes we have a suicide war a lot of death and destruction and an avalanche in the first 15 minutes of this movie and I'm yeah. thinking, yep, we blew up the animation budget, the special effects budget in the first 22 minutes, but I was wrong. This nope. movie is gorgeous. What budget? <laughs> we don't need no budget. Eh, what budget? But but that is kind of, uh, you know, to that point where the movie does start off, I don't want to say it starts off fast, but it oh, does yeah. start off at, at a high point and then kind of eases you into the rest of the backstory as it goes on. Uh, and if you forget over the course of the two and a half hours that is the runtime, uh, that this is part one of three, mm -hmm. you, you know, in this context of one movie, you're kind of thinking, well, 
we started off with a bang and then we're kind of leveling out. Uh, you know, there are some high points and some big spots that they uh, build to in the middle and the end. Uh, the third act is bananas. Uh, yes, absolutely yes. Um, insane. But it is kind of like you have to watch it with the context of this is only part one. So for some of the reviews that I've been seeing from Chinese press, from Singapore press, uh, you know, it, over the past, you know, collective over the past two or three months was it starts off high and then it slows down completely. However, I, I thought that, yes, though that is true, it's because there's so much backstory that they have to fill and keep you engrossed in the second one. Right. Because if this is how it starts, and of course, we're, of course, we're alluding to a lot and not really saying much, but if this is how it starts, what are they going to top that off with in part two and three? Before we even came on, like I told you, I didn't even realize we were going to get a part three until I saw the title, you know, a two and three. And I'm thinking, oh, we have a lot to wrap up here as the series goes on. And I don't know if this is typical Chinese cinema or Asian cinema. Uh, I will gladly defer to people who know that in the comments. Please let me know. But uh, to your point, slow, like it starts off action packed, obviously. And then there's a lot of gods. And if you don't follow Asian myth uh, mythology or Chinese mythology, you wouldn't know a lot of the gods. I've played this one game series from Atlas Games called uh, Shin Megami Tensei, and they talk I, about, you know, different deities and stuff like that. So I would I'm say play get... Dynasty Warriors. Oh, I've never played Dynasty Warriors. But, okay. okay. But, but that's but that's set in this time period, not mm -hmm. this specific, uh, you know, uh, battle and encounter, but it's set in that whole time period, uh, you know, around the foundation of China um you know between zero and 200 uh you know bc and stuff like that so this is this would be that period that we're talking about um which actually dynasty warriors got me into uh, a lot of the backstory of of chinese city so shout out to dynasty warriors 30 years ago but <laughs> as far as this film goes uh i think we should actually describe it a little bit and give you a little bit of the plot you know cool. because it is an epic it is two and a half hours but if you haven't read the uh great uh, Chinese uh, book. Um, it's uh, Zhang Lin Zhu's An Investiture of the Gods. Um, it's one of the classic, you know, Chinese fiction stories of of their literary history. And basically, you have this uh, King Yi of the Shang Dynasty. Um, he is he wants to take over the world. Yeah, you know, he wants to conquer, as you do as a, a king. And um, he has the noble idea of bringing together the, um, so in, in the kingdom, and to put it in American terms, you have the uh, states and the leaders of the individual states from the north, south, east, and west are commanded to send their sons to be hostages as leverage in the kingdom and serve in the king's right. royal army. And then, of course, um, during the great battle in the beginning of the movie, uh, we see that, uh, you know, the princess of the conquered army from Zhao uh, mm -hmm. may or may not be possessed by an ancient fox demon. Because why wouldn't she be? Because she survived the avalanche, right? right. So, yeah, why right. wouldn't she be possessed? Correct. Because why wouldn't she be possessed by an actual fox demon? Because that's the world we live in. <laughs> so, uh, either way, it's it, it really is an interesting tale. Because the question has always been, oh, my God, the king has been possessed. Or is he just ambitious? And that is something to, you know, consider as well, is that, you know, just when you think, uh, you know, ambition, his ambition just corrodes his soul. Um, and we see some war crimes, flat out war crimes. Yes. Actually, I will never look at sausage patties the same way again. I can't go to McDonald's and have an Epic Muffin after seeing this movie because of the atrocities committed in in this film. Uh, if you um, if you're a wrestling fan and you remember the 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 game and the Big Boss Man and the Big Show and dog food and being fed your relatives, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you that, remember that, South Park and the Chili Con Carne, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but needless to say, um. War crimes. It was <laughs> the movie's two and a half hours. It was ninety minutes of war crimes. Um, everybody had to go. Um, but it does have, uh, you know, 
one of my favorite Chinese characters, Nizha, um, who is the boy with the fire wheels, you know, zipping yes. around. He has a hell of a story on his in his own right. Um, young John, who has a hell of a story in his own right. If you haven't seen New Gods, uh, Young Jian, do that right now. If you haven't seen Neja uh, from the same studio, do that tomorrow. But it's, um, but God damn, those, those are some great movies. But about this one, um, one of the things that I really like the most is that even though it's a cast, a large cast, yes, uh, there's so many different entities in it and they're all equally important. And it doesn't really feel over overstuffed. Um, it doesn't really feel like Oppenheimer, for example, where it's just like, there's so many famous names of this movie and they get three lines and then they go away. And you're like, well, okay. Somebody's got to pay the rent. But no, everybody has their own story and their own connection into this main uh, you know, story with the king and his greed taking over the world. It, it is, it is, it's a very familiar and simple story to follow with the intricate nuts and bolts that uh make it that fills it up however i wanted more okay. I, I wanted more from uh from the story i wanted more uh from i think the story could have been a bit tidier i don't think it needed to be two and a half hours no, um considering that it was part one um i think that we you know there were a lot of things where they foreshadowed the hell out of some things and then took an hour to get to the point where you go like, Hey, I told you so. Well, you, we knew. So I, 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 you know, enjoyed the story for what it was. Uh, what it's one of the better adaptations of this, uh, investiture of the gods, uh, you know, tale, but it's still kind of, it could have been a bit tighter. I, I think, um, it, it does feel that way. However, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've never heard of these stories before, if you don't know who these characters are, then you and if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings or the big epic hero's quest type story, then this is something for you. I mean, that that's that that's really what it comes down to. If you not that this is a direct comparison, but it has the same feeling of Legend of Zelda. It has the same feeling of Shadow of the Colossus as video games. It has the same feeling um, as, um, you know, Lord of the Rings uh, as a as a game, uh, as a movie where it's the the characters that you like the quest to get it done the absolute lunatic maniac of a villain yeah uh who puts luthor to shame um and then uh and then of course the cliffhanger where you're left wondering how does this all work out because there are two post credit scene, two mid credit scenes that let you know that business is about to pick up to steal the, the turn of phrase so very, very, um, very good. Better than I thought it was going to be, especially when I saw that long, that runtime. But, uh, you know, surprised in that way. But I really wish it, it, it could have been a bit tighter um, as far as uh, the editing goes. Uh, what, what about you, Damon? Do you think? To that point, the two and a half hour runtime, it did drag on. I think they could have done this in about two hours and, and made it, a lot more, like you said, a little bit more tidier. Like for me personally, there were a lot of loose ends that didn't get, in my opinion, for instance, until that mid credit scene with the Fox demon, I was like, where'd, the, where'd she go in this final battle? Because there's a final battle with a, a Colossi. Let's just call it what it is, a Colossi. Mm -hmm. That's because that's the first thing I thought of was the game. And you don't see the Fox demon until the post, the mid credit scene. And I'm thinking, wait what happened with that story and then that's when it gets kind of put together at the end but yeah. there is a lot of of just family treachery backstabbing you know and front like stabbing too because literal backstabbing <laughs> heart ripping out of people you know to get what you want like it's it's i felt like i was watching an episode of the jerry springer show that just lasted for two and a half hours because Everybody was out to get everybody except for one person. <laughs> one person had the right idea. And even then, a couple of times in this film, um, G5, I was thinking, you know what? He's going to turn. He's going to do a heel turn at some point in this movie. Because, again, I didn't read the source material like you did. Mm -hmm. So watching his, I don't even want to call it growth. His character's just arc in this film 
was not what I expected it to be, but at the same time, I'm glad it went the way it did because, right. because his character played the conflicted son of, you know, if you watch Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, Yondu versus Ego. Yeah. It's like the daddy that raised you versus your actual father. And he played the conflicted son very well in this movie. Uh, and being basically the heart and soul of pretty much the whole nation. Uh, if you if you watch this film, and, and again, to go with Jamal, you should watch this film. Even someone like me who went in blind, just for the visuals alone, the fight, the music, the ambiance. The music was beautiful. The music was beautiful. And I love I love a good soundtrack. So if that keeps me interested from every chase scene, from every battle, from every just this uh, exposition that people were just talking. There was a beautiful sound accompanying it, and and they did a really good job with this. But overall, to tie the bow, to tie it in a bow on my end, a uh, lot of action, weird romance. If you're into sleeping with demons, uh, and, and why weird, wouldn't you be? Well, why wouldn't you be if they look like you know uh, right. what was the name Sue Daish? Uh, if they look like her, there's also a demon son that gets raised in Kun Lung. An adopted son that turns into a flying beast at the end of the movie. There's a lot of shit going on, man. Yeah. And basically, the the fable for me is: don't be a dick, be a good person, <laughs> and things will work out for you one way or another. Don't be greedy, you know. Don't betray your family. Yeah. To quote Dominic Toretto, but for a layman who watched this movie, those are like the main principles I took from it. But that's not to say it wasn't an enjoyable movie. Even though the one part with the the alchemist, I could not stand that character. But I know that he was made to be that much over the top. Mm -hmm. But my God, he annoyed the hell out of me. And then when he's at the end in the ending battle, I'm thinking, you just got here, man. What are you doing here? And then you find out he's working for another big bad which we, that don't, we really, don't see that's a we don't see besides that right. first portion so a lot of right. missing pieces for me well anybody that can decapitate himself and and, and still like be interrogated around. Yeah. <laughs> literally pulled uh, around so, yeah, yeah you don't really need a business card at that point if, if that's you know, oh yeah he's that guy that's what he does um i i will agree uh to a lot of those points and and add further that um i think that visually uh, it's up there with a lot of uh, what's happening in the West. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Disney, take notes. Marvel, take notes. Um, uh, they're not doing anything that we haven't seen before visually. Um, they're just doing it better. Because if so, if, if it's said in there, in the credits, and then the credits are in Chinese, um, but if it's said in there that no animals were uh, harmed in the making of this film, Right. I'm going to call BS on that. Because, Me too. Yeah, because I I don't believe that at all. Um, Them horses, they, they they there was a couple of scenes with those horses, man. Right. Like, uh, uh, you 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 sacrificed the horse. Like, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know that we haven't you know talked about much of the story because I really it's it's a too much to explain at the time that we have. It really is. But there's one scene where this white horse, um, and, and it's called a snow dragon because mm -hmm. you know. It's the beautiful white horse. Cliff dives off of a 300 foot uh, cliffside <laughs> into a raging river. Uh huh. And the horse has the wherewithal to pick dude up and go, Yeah, it's time to go home. Uh huh. That is the baddest goddamn horse I've ever seen. I'm, I'm not an equestrian, uh, you know, personality at all, but that made, I was a horse guy for a moment because damned if you if you haven't seen something uh any more spectacular and and this is the thing it, it's even though yes it is grandiose we are literally talking about demons and gods and stuff like that uh it's not over the top cheesy hack everybody's playing this you know borderline goofy characters no there is real evil in this movie yes there is and that's one thing that's a testament to a good villain where this is the person that isn't just ambitious and, and whose ambition knows no no range, no moral compass is you know, their ambition is, is supersedes their moral compass. No, this dude is legit evil. I mean, the point of uh, the gods, the gods send, uh, 
you know, a, 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 an envoy down because they can foresee the end, the apocalypse, as yeah. far as the humans go. Mm-hmm. And they send down a guy with the Fenchin Bong, which is a tool that will allow um, uh, people of humanity to invest in the gods. It collects souls. The gods are appeased by the souls because why would God want, you know, to save humanity by murdering them all? Because we need your souls, because that's a different situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, dear King Yi says, wait a minute. If I can raise an undead army, that's so much better than a living army uh, party on. Wait a minute. So you want to purposely murder the populace? Yes, expeditiously. Yeah. Uh, if we could do that by sundown, that would be awesome. Can we set that up? <laughs> yeah, there's real evil in this movie, and I think, uh, and I, I think his name is Chris Phillips, who plays uh, King Yi. Um, there's more than a few times in the movie where I go, "This sob is crazy. Yes, they got is. to get him because he's insane, and 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 in the bad way." So, Creation of the Gods, Part One, Kingdom of Storms. Uh, it took eight years to produce. Oh wow! Yeah, um, and not because it went through production hell, just because of the laborious and intense, uh, you know, filming that it was in. Um, I think it took three years to shoot this movie. I think they shot one and two back to back, and they're wrapping up production on two um, right now, so ish right now. Um, and, and the fact that it came out in July and turned around to be in the U.S. Uh, or in English-speaking countries uh, in about three three or four months is a small miracle because it does not happen that fast usually. So it's a, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's a good, it's a really good movie. The only thing that I would say uh, is if, you, if you're watching this from well go, we need this in IMAX. Yes. I, I, I appreciate the one day. I know that Barbie came out this weekend. And that took away a lot of IMAX screens because it got released for the first time in IMAX. But this is one of those things. I would I would have waited until maybe next weekend when nothing's coming. No, the creator comes out next weekend. But maybe two weeks from now when nothing comes out. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we need more. I'm glad that we saw it in IMAX. Uh, I think just the one day isn't enough. Uh, this is the thing that people... Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get out there and see it while you can in the theater. You, you cannot replicate this experience at home. And I did. And you know what? To be quite frank, if it wasn't for the fact that I w- were covering this movie, if someone would have told me, "Dude, you need to go watch this," I would watch this in theaters because you're not lying when you say this is a, you know, a, com- a complete spectacle from start to finish. Uh, yeah. You know, we're, we're we're talking about the Yi Dynasty. So if you're a history buff. You like that if you like that stuff, you're gonna get drawn in with all the folklore that goes with it. If you like bad guys, Emperor Yi's a bad guy. Yep. You won't like the bad, not in a good way. Like Thanos, is he right? Is he wrong? No, you go no. hate the fact that this guy's the bad guy. Yeah, there. Yeah, there is no moral um, justification no for him. his actions. Uh, there is no. He's not Mister Freeze, and you're like, no. Yeah, he's not, there is. He's not John Q. He's not Batman. He's not. Um, this vigilante that is doing the right things the wrong way, this guy is legitimate evil. He he is inhuman in 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 uh, through his evilness, and I think for him, to, you know, you don't need subtitles to to feel that level of this some bitch crazy. So it's it's a, it's a testament to how good uh, that that character is, and um and and how manipulative he is. You know, well, you it, saw it too with uh, with the fox demon. I, her name escapes me, but you know who I mean, uh, Sue Daj. Yes, uh, Sue Daji. But how do I say this? The fact that you think she's the catalyst to all his evil, and they bring this up in the movie, saying, "Have you been bewitched by this demon, or has this been you all along?" Right. And we we are given that answer, and, right. and you are gonna hate this man. Because he will do whatever it it takes to claim the throne, keep the throne, and at the first sight of, of, let's say, unrest, execute everybody in their mama. Like, he has no scruples whatsoever. So if you like your bad guys completely uh, malignant malignant and evil, that's the guy for you. Because, my God. Yeah. I mean, it's... um... 
Uh, yeah, Lex, Lex Luthor is smiling from somewhere On the in Metropolis. Wall. Yeah, right now because uh, uh, you know it, 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 that's the thing. It's 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 really enjoyable. Um, I, you could nitpick about the things that you may not understand if you don't have the backstory. But just mm -hmm. flat out, uh, you've never heard of this before. If you don't understand what's going on, uh, I do think that it is it is one of those epics that you just kind of go and, and you just go along with it. Like You're going to find a character that you like. You're going to find a character that you don't like. Um, the, the sets are beautiful. The um, the cinematography uh, is absolutely uh, impressive. Um, you know, I want to know where they shot these things because there is some... Uh, scenes of sweeping vistas and, and rivers and valleys that are like, damn, is this uh, that's China too? Um, so it's just well, just really well done all the way around. Um, final grade, what, what do you give it for what it is? I give it a B, plus actually. Okay, I give um, it a good B. Plus. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give it, I'm, I'm gonna give it an A minus. Okay, um. You know, officially, uh, I give it four out of five stars on Letterboxd. And the reason why I can't go higher than that is because, yes, it does have a lengthy runtime. It does kind of drag a bit in the middle. Um, and and it even though you start off, you know, and maybe that's the cultural disconnect that I have, you know, Correct. because there are some things where I'm just going like, well, why do we do that? You know, like, because culturally, that's not what we would do here. Uh, culturally, those things wouldn't fly here in any folklore setting in the West. Um, it's easiest to compare it to Lord of the Rings uh, because that's the kind of feeling that you get of an ancient time, you know, mythological and magical things happening. And you go, nope, Gimli would never do that. Um, but maybe that's the cultural disconnect that there is. Uh, so it's a lot of things, more hits than misses, uh, solid four out of five for me. Yeah, definitely B plus. And I, I think the only reason I don't give it an A minus was the runtime uh, and the, the the plot threads that if you, re you really have to pay attention to see where these plot threads ended or where they get picked up on, like for me personally, that was just too much to focus on for me. Right. Uh, but box office wise, this made $354 million internationally. I guess the Chinese box office. So you know what? Right. Yeah, and this was mostly done, uh, it seems, in the studio. This is done mostly on studio, not on set, not on a, um, like in a mountain or anything like that. So, okay. Yeah. And there's a, a deleted scene, apparently, that they did not show us, but I'll show it to you off air. But yeah, there's a deleted scene, uh, B plus for me, A minus for you. Go out and see this movie. Please do yourself a favor, Creation of the Gods, one, uh, if you like fantasy and you like folklore, this is the movie for you. If you like a soap opera in your action movies, this is definitely the movie for you. And if you like traitors, you got something for everybody. If you want to be that bad guy, be a traitorous asshole, you got something for you too. Here at Big Gold Belt Media, go follow us on BigGoldBelt.com, your one-stop shop for all things entertainment. And we will catch you next time with another movie review.